the Single Mom Success Podcast, episode 37. I also know that regardless of my best intentions and what I do, what I say, and the rules I set down, there are many times that my child has and will in the future continue to just be an ass. This is the Single Mom Success Podcast, where we cover all the glorious mess that is life as a single parent and how you can navigate through to become the best version of yourself and how to live the life you desire. Do you want to get weekly email reminders of your awesomeness? Head on over to the singlemomblog.com to sign up today. Now, let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome to today's Single Mom Success Podcast. I hope you are doing fantastically. Um, God, it's been a couple of weeks since I did a podcast, and um, things have just been so crazy busy. Um, you know, I mentioned that on the last podcast that we're getting towards the end of the school year, and it seems like they jam pack <laughs> everything into the last couple of weeks of school. So I've had plays and and conferences and and just all kinds of stuff, music concerts, like it's everything, like end of year, everything, right? So we have uh, just been running around like crazy. And so I just haven't had a chance to sit down and do the podcast. So I do apologize for that. But I'm back and uh, we're going to dive right into it. So today's podcast actually uh, is inspired from uh, something that was uh, shared on my Facebook feed, again, where I get a lot of my um, information. I get a ton of updates from like news sites and stuff like that. So it's not all just nonsense that I see on my Facebook, though there is a good quantity of that uh, along with the political nonsense that's out there now and blah, blah, blah. So there is a town in Wisconsin that is looking to find new ways to help stop bullying. And as everybody knows, bullying is a huge issue. Um, And I think it always has been an issue, though it has changed significantly from when we were kids, as well as from when our parents were kids, right? Like, um, just because the world has changed, right? Our our entire world, our structure, um, our children have changed. Like, you know, the way kids are today is not anywhere close to the way we were when we were kids, and it's not nearly even remotely close to the way my parents were when they were kids. Um, and a lot of that is just the changes in our society, and um, also in huge part, the fact that we have such an online presence now. Um, you know, there's so much more information and so much more stuff that our children are exposed to that they didn't used to be exposed to. Right. Um, which is one of the reasons why I did a post uh, on my blog a while back uh, about why I refuse to let my children on social media, because <clears throat> I just don't think it's a good idea for them. It's something that I've been holding off and I have held off on for a significant amount of time. So anyway, I looked at this article and um, because of the bullying and how it's just become sort of rampant and it's it's so much easier now it's like you know it used to be you when you were a kid you would potentially get bullied at school and it was you know while you're at school maybe in between classes or there was a one specific kid or a group of kids uh that you know were bothering you and you avoided them or you confronted them or you know whatever the case may be um and they teased you and you know maybe said some mean things about you and 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 not to diminish it when when i was a kid because um I was, I was not necessarily bullied, but definitely made fun of. I was not, I was not popular. I was not wealthy. Um, I did not have name brand clothes. Uh, I wore glasses. I was kind of geeky. Um, and so I was sort of ostracized a little bit because of that. Um, you know, where kids would be like, you know, I had friends who had, you know, name brand stuff and I, I borrowed a friend's jacket one time. I remember, Uh, And I had people make fun of me saying, oh, she must have borrowed that because she doesn't have the money for that and da 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 da. So um, I was always sort of made fun of just because I didn't have the name brand stuff. Um, And again, I didn't, you know, I I wore glasses and I just wasn't really, I wasn't popular. Um, But I did have a lot of friends and I had a lot of friends across a lot of different uh, areas of school and different, uh, you know, cliques of people. So, you know, I had friends in choir, I had friends in drama. I had friends who were cheerleaders. I had friends who were jocks. I had friends who were 
stoners, you know, and when I was in high school, actually, um, a lot of the teasing and stuff that I used to get sort of subsided because I think of the people that I was hanging out with, because I was hanging out with kids, or, you know, the group of kids who wore leather jackets and anarchy signs and had mohawks, and they were a little bit intimidating and frightening, so I think I didn't get as much teasing as I would have normally got, you know, uh, through high school. Um, but the, the thing was, is back then, when you left school, it was done, right? That was it. You weren't teased anymore. People, I mean, maybe they called you on the phone and pranked you or something like that, but it wasn't anything, you know, you could get away from it. Nowadays, you can't, right? As kids, if they have an online presence, if they're on any social media channels, um, you know, they can get bullied there. They can get stalked there. Kids can get made fun of there. Like people can totally ostracize and, and put it out there for the world. So it's not just, you know, the kids at your school. So like the kids at your school could take a, a an embarrassing photo of you, put it out there online, take a vote, video of you, put it out there online and the entire world gets to pick on you, right? Like it's not just the kids in your school or your neighborhood. Now it's everybody. And we live in a society nowadays where it seems like it just drives me. It's, it's like people, there are certain types of people that because they are online and because they are anonymous and they have that anonymity to them, they feel it gives them license to just be horrible, nasty people, right? Those trolls that you see. The people who someone posts a picture of themselves and the first thing that they do is comment and go, God, you look ugly or God, you're fat or God, this, you know, instead of just leaving them alone, right? Like not saying anything positive that like their sole mission is to just spew filth and nastiness out of themselves. Um, and I don't really understand that. I don't understand that type of people. Um, the only thing I can think is that they must just truly be unhappy right? Like they must be these people who are just so unhappy with themselves or so miserable inside that they can't help but have that nastiness like ooze out of them um, when given a platform where they can do so freely without fear of actual repercussions. Um, and I think we live in a society that is encouraging that. Like you get attention when you're that nasty troll you get people you know they said they say it all all the time on the forums on on chat message boards facebook you know don't feed the trolls right because that's what they're looking for they make a comment like that because it gets them some form of attention they're like little kids who you know mommy and daddy aren't paying attention to them so they're going to act out so that they get the attention even if it's bad attention right and i always imagine some of these people as just lonely miserable unhappy people um you know, who have nothing better to do with their day and their time than sit behind a computer screen and just type out just atrocities and nastiness and horrible things. Um, you know, and so, it, and it is scary because it gives us that, you know, anonymity that, you know, like maybe because they don't actually know who I am or they can't actually do anything to me, I get to be as nasty and as ugly as I want to be and allow that side to come out. And I think that that's scary actually in this world, but um, so for kids though, nowadays it is worse than it was when I was a kid because you can't escape it. And that one thing that goes out to the entire world is now what you're known for, right? Like that's just an embarrassment that just will not end. So that's one of the biggest reasons I allow, I don't allow my children on social media, um, as well as some of just the stupidity that's out there. And I, I put that in my blog post to be like, the kids challenging each other to light it, light themselves on fire. Like who thought of that? Like just the stupidity of it is astonishing. Right. Um, you know, and, and just the things out there that people can put out that is just misinformation or that's just horribly a bad idea. Uh, I recently also just saw something else where somebody posted on a social media platform. I can't remember what it was. Um, the Bernie Sanders glow sticks where they were actually saying, here's how you make these. And it was basically showing people how to make a chlorine bomb. It was, it was chlorine tablets and alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, but, and telling them to put them together and mix it up and shake it up in a bottle. It, that's a bomb. Like it explodes. So it was basically somebody using social media to try and hurt people, right? 
it's horrible to me the things that people will do like how twisted and ridiculously demented do you have to be to deliberately put something out there that could actually physically injure someone if they did it and make it seem like something else it is so horrible right like some little kid if they have social media they may see that and go Oh, wow, that looks like a cool idea. I want to make my own glow sticks. I want to make my own glow bottle. And they do it and end up hurting themselves, right? It's just scary to me. So that's why my kid, like, I refuse to let my kids on social media, and especially until they're old enough to make intelligent, concise decisions, as well as understand that what people say about you is not, you know what I mean? The things that people put out there on social media, the things that people say, you know, understanding that that's just their ugliness coming through and it has nothing to do with you, right? So definitely trying to build up the self-image part before I allow my kids on <clears throat> social media. But for other, you know, parents who do, and, th and that's not me bashing any parents who, you know, do let their children on social media, that's just my preference. And it's 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 the a way for me to um, just try and make sure that my kids are well prepared for you know they they've got that solid foundation of um you know they they feel really good and solid about themselves internally emotionally before you know i let them out there for the trolls to potentially attack them <laughs> so <clears throat> but um back to the article that i was talking about there is actually uh, a town in wisconsin who recently passed a bill um, that will actually put responsibility on, on the parents of the bullies. So what this bill proposes and what it will do is it's actually going to fine parents hundreds of dollars if the bullying continues after receiving a warning. So basically you get a warning, hey, uh, we were told and notified that your child has been bullying this other child. This is the incident that happened or this is what happened. And then if it continues again, you're going to get fined, right? And so I'm really on the fence about this. I'm, I'm sort of 50-50. And here's the reason why. So my first instinct on this is, wow, that's kind of a cool idea, right? That's sort of the initial reaction that I had of, okay, that, that gives, you know, because I know that we had an incident where my son was actually bullied in school. He was bullied by another child who was in his special education class. Um... And this kid actually was physically assaulting my son, not just teasing him, but physically like he was menacing to the point where my son was, you know, making up stomach issues and, and all these issues so that he didn't have to go to school. He was actually going to school and making himself throw up. He was forcing himself to throw up so that he could get sent home because he didn't want to deal with this kid. Right. So when I found out about this, um, there was actually a, uh, one of his friends actually confirmed it, but my son came home and told me about an issue incident where this kid had like pushed him down on the ground and was kicking him while he was on the ground. And I went and talked to his friend who actually happens to live right across the street from us. And I said, you know, this, you know, I know that there was an incident with Connor at school today and I would really like to hear, um, your side if you, if you could tell me what you witnessed um, because I also know that my son is a bit of a drama king. And so I wanted to make sure that the information I was getting was accurate <laughs> before I went, uh, you know, all mama bear down at the school. So this child, you know, he confirmed it. He said, yeah, this is what happened. And he started kicking him while he was down and da, 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 da. So, um, I went to the school and talked to the school and they were like, yeah, okay, well, we, we'll take care of it. And I was like, you know what? No, this kid has been bothering my son for weeks and weeks. And we've talked about this. And now he has physically assaulted my son. This is not okay. Like, you know, I understand that he's a special needs child. And I'm sure, you know, I don't know what his diagnosis is. I don't know what's going on. And I do have some empathy in the fact that I have special needs children. And I do understand. Like, for my son, Gage, I know that if he had not gotten the care he needed or the, you know, the the work that we had done with him and all of the stuff that we have done with him over the years, 
I know that he could very likely be a very physical child where he could actually be like that, where he's actually hurting children because he can't control himself as part of his special needs. He's got anger issues, impulse control issues, you know, those are part of a brain injury. So I do understand that it is possible that a child with special needs could have a problem with controlling those impulses. However, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, <clears throat> uh, you know, I, 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 ha I sympathize with that and I do understand. However, it's not acceptable for my son to be so miserable and unhappy that he doesn't want to go to school, that he's making himself sick to avoid this child where he is actually being beat up and kicked while he's down on the ground, kicking him. Um, none of that is acceptable and it's not something that I will tolerate. And so there was, you know, they're like, you know, they told me, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to take care of this. Da, 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 da. And then, you know, and I thought we had worked it out. They were going to work on keeping him away from Connor. They're going to move him to a different class or whatever the case may be. And then to find out a week later, you know, he ended up intimidating my son and, and hitting him again and assaulting him again. And so I, I, you know, I was like, look, is there no repercussion? Like, so we ended up getting the police involved. I said, look, if you do not, re like, I want to press charges on this child. And I said, and it's not because I'm not trying to be mean. I do understand the kids fight, but here's the thing. Obviously, whatever has been going on and the repercussions that this child had, his parents clearly did not make it clear to him that he could not do this. Something is going on where this child is not getting it. And if it has to do with his special needs, then fine. But clearly he's not getting whatever help he needs to help him address this issue. Right. And if I have to press charges in order to make sure that he gets whatever therapy or counseling or whatever he needs to address this, then fine. But clearly his parents are not doing it or you're not doing it somewhere. Something is not happening to help this child. And he is now and he is still physically assaulting my son. So in that aspect, you know, and in all honesty, I thought to myself, I'm like, what, you know, what are these kids what is this child's parents doing? Are they doing anything, right? Because for me, I know that if my son was brought home or told, you know, if I went in and, and I was told, hey, your son is harassing this child and this is what's going on and he's intimidating, my son's ass would be like grass. He would be done. You're not going to assault people in school. You're not going to make it unsafe for kids to come to school. You're not going to be that kid. So help me God, you will not be that kid. I refuse and I will hand you your ass if we continue to have this problem, right? So as a parent, I have to take responsibility for that. So that's where I'm kind of like on the side of this where it's like, hey, if you're as if you as a parent are not stepping up and making sure your child understands that this is unacceptable and there will be consequences for that, then you can be held accountable for it. Now, on the flip side, hmm. I also know that regardless of my best intentions and what I do, and what I say and the rules I set down, there are many times that my child has and will in the future continue to just be an ass, right? Like I can't control, <laughs> like <laughs> despite your best intentions, your children have their own personalities, especially teenagers, especially teenage boys. Um, and they are going to do what they're going to do, right? And there is no way that you could change that, stop it, control it, anything, right? So I do understand that. So as a parent, you're like, you know, I can do whatever I'm gonna do and my child may still go to school and be a total jerk, right? And so now I have to pay that fine. But here's the thing, at that point, it's not for me to take up with the school system or the, or the county, it's for me to take up with my child. If I get fined, 600 bucks, right? 300 bucks or whatever, right? If I get fined that, trust me, you're going to end up paying me back for that in some fashion. If you have a job, it's coming out of your check. If you don't have a job, it's coming out manual labor. Like if I have to pay that fine, you're going to, you're going to reap the consequences of that, you know, because I know that there's potentially some children out there who are just jerks who are going to say, I don't care if my parents get fined, I'm still going to behave the way I'm going to behave. And again, then it rec it comes back to the parents to actually step up and parent and be like, hey, if you want to be an ass in this world, fine, but you have to understand there's consequences for it, right? There's a whole country of people in jail who, for whatever reason, 
didn't stop and remember that there are consequences for bad behavior, right? You do bad stuff, you get in trouble. That's how it works. There's consequences for your actions and your behavior. And if you behave badly, there are repercussions for that, right? Now, if the school's going to find me, you're sure as hell going to pay that back to me in some way or another. Trust me, it's coming out of you. Now, the article did reference another issue and another point that something like this would be very difficult and, and very hard for families who are struggling financially. And sometimes you do see a correlation in that where, you know, sometimes some of the bullies and some of the kids who are um, j jerks, I mean, let's be flat out honest, <laughs> they're jerks. Um, sometimes it's because they come from families who are poor or less uh, fortunate and it's you know it's sort of that attitude that chip on the shoulder right that you you maybe develop if you know I don't I don't have a lot of money I don't have this you know I come from a poor neighborhood I come from a poor family um, you know and this is my defense mechanism right or whatever the the psychological reasons are for that type of behavior um, so I do get that and for me that would be a big deal right if my son came home and said hey I got fined for bull you know I got, I got in trouble for bullying again and here's this thing you've been fined 300 bucks. Yeah, that would be very difficult. That would be very hard and that would hurt me financially and it would cause even more financial distress. Um, but again, I think that that sort of, it does put that sort of knowledge and responsibility and understanding in the child that hopefully they would get it and say, hey, look, you know, your actions now are causing this family stress and problems. Like there are repercussions for your behavior and again i think that it cycles back around to the whole idea of kids nowadays because of the anonymity of online platforms they can just be assholes and there's no repercussions for it right and then that that translates and and transitions into the real world right like you think you can be a badass online and talk a bunch of crap and then you're gonna go to school and and be this badass and talk a bunch of crap like there are consequences for your behavior. So um, I think that this is something that I, you know, even though I understand some of the, the negative aspects of it, um, God, you know, I, I kind of like it. I got to say, having the kids be responsible, because here's the thing, it's up to the parents to then ultimately make the kids responsible, right? If the parent gets fined and they have to pay that fine, then they better be going back to the kids and saying, this is not okay. Like, you're going to pay this back and this is not going to happen again. And if it continues to happen again, you know, these are the repercussions. So it does sort of make parents come around and take a look at what their kids are doing and actually step in and take, a, you know, take charge and say, hey, you don't get to walk around in this world being a total jerk face. You just don't, right? So, um, yeah, I really kind of dig this bill. I do like it. I think it's interesting and I... um I can't wait to see how this kind of plays out. And I'm sure there's going to be, you know, blowback from it. I'm sure there's going to be those who vehemently, you know, oppose it. Because there always is, right? You know, I mean, you're never going to make everybody happy all the time. It's just impossible. Um, but uh, I think that it's something that, you know, I've always been one of those people who have had the mentality of, you know, if you always... Um, if you always do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got, right? So, you know, if you, if we continue doing all of the same stuff we've always done and, you know, you expect things to change, you know, it's, it's, it's that, what is it, that thing from, uh, who is it? Uh, Einstein, right? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result, right? So if currently we're facing an increasing problem with bullying and the things that we have been doing are not working to curb it, they're not working to stop it, then it's time to try something new. It's time to try something different, something more radical. Um, you know, and maybe it doesn't work, but maybe it does, right? Um, it's kind of the same way I felt about, you know, Obamacare when it came out, everybody's all up in arms. Oh, it's a problem and this, I'm like, look, Clearly what we've been doing is not working, right? Whatever we've been doing is not working. People are going bankrupt. They're losing their entire lives because they got sick, right? Like there's so many people in this country uninsured. Um, you know, so many people in this country are uninsurable, right? Like there's gonna, 
you know, and everybody was up in arms and there's still tons of people obviously who hate it. Uh, but again, it goes back to, you're never going to make everybody happy. Right. But my thought process on it was even at the time was we've been doing the same thing for so long and it's not working, right? It's not working. So we need to do something different. And sometimes you need to flip a problem upside down and turn it on its head in order to find a solution that works or a better way of doing something, right? Approach the problem differently than you have been and see if you get a better result, right? It may not work, it may work, but at least it's something different. And that was what is my always, like my praise for Obamacare was, um, was at least he's trying something different. You know, everybody was all up in arms and so many people were pissed and the Republicans were tried to repeal it over and over and over and over again. But at least it was something new. It was something radical and it was something that shook it up and made a difference for quite a lot of people, right? Um, but again, you're always going to have people who are for and people who are against. And I'm sure there's going to be some backlash on this and maybe it won't work. Maybe it will fail miserably. But at least it's an attempt to try and do something different. But I do like it in the fact that, you know, sometimes, and you know, I've had that happen. Like I said, I honestly believe that the the kid who was bullying my son, he obviously you know, because he was continuing to do it, maybe his parents just weren't doing what needed to be done to help resolve the issue, right? Maybe his parents just stepped up and said, oh, it's not a big deal, or oh, he's special needs, so, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. But that's not true, right? You have to at least try. So that was always my thought of, you know, what what are we going to do to try and and fix this issue or at least improve the issue and bullying has become a huge huge issue uh, because it is so different you know kids are are quite literally sometimes stalked and and made to feel so horrible and they can't escape it right they can't escape it and we've created a society of children who are so dependent on what society and social media think of them that when they become the victims of bullying, they start feeling like there's no way out, it's hopeless, and it totally tears them down from the inside out. And that's why you see an increase of children who are committing suicide and uh, running away or, you know, uh, abusing drugs to escape. You know, there's just so many things that I see nowadays, and it, it's scary as a parent. So I think anything that we can do to try and take a bite out of this and try and start kind of turning the tide um, is, is good, right? And again, this may not pan out, but personally, I, I think it's an interesting approach and I'm interested and excited to kind of see how this plays out and whether it does make a difference. So um, I hope that you have enjoyed today's podcast. I would love if you would uh, give me a comment. Let me know. Have, you, have your children experienced bullying? Have you had to deal with this? Is it something that, um, you know, did the school do a good job in helping your child? Or, you know, was your child the one who was bullying? Did they, you know, were they the one who was a bully? And, and if so, what did you do as a parent to try and help stop that and, and curb it and improve the situation? Um, because it was, like I said, you know, as parents, we, we try and do the best that we can, but in the end, we're raising children who, like I said, I will always say it. Sometimes our kids can be assholes. They just can. And it's, it's not necessarily PC, but it's true. Right. Um, so I would love to hear from you. So please, uh, comment below if you're listening in the blog, if not go to the single mom blog.com forward slash bullying and, uh, leave your comment. I would love to hear uh, your stories. Uh, was your child bullied? Was your child the bully? You know, how did you resolve the situation? What were the steps needed to be taken? Did the situation get resolved? Um, and, uh, I would love to hear from you. So I hope you have a fantastic day. Never, ever forget that you are fabulous. You are absolutely awesome. If you haven't been told that today, I am telling you now, have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks for joining me today for the Single Mom Success Podcast. Be sure to follow us on all our social media platforms 
And if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter yet, head on over to thesinglemomblog.com to make sure you never miss out on our most recent posts and podcasts. Thanks again, and never forget, you rock.